Hello everyone. In this video, I will show you how you can use Google Query function to make rich and interactive dashboards like this. This dashboard not only displays charts, but also lets you perform filtering and queries. Here, you can drill down to get finer results. This will come in handy if your dashboard has lots of charts, but you are interested to see through a few metrics. Like here, I can quickly see quarterly sales volume in a particular quarter. Or you can see the sales of a particular salesperson. Down here, you can even switch charts between monthly, quarterly, and yearly sales. Down here, I have demonstrated querying your database right here in this dashboard. It will greatly give power to your dashboard. You don't have to navigate and look into the raw data. Here, I have taken two examples. One displays sales performed between two dates. Another displays all the employees who have joined after a particular date. You can add more queries to it. The query involving dates are the difficult ones, that's why I've put them here. Let me show you a quick demo. Now let's talk about how to build it. So first, you will need data. Here, for this dashboard, I have used these datasets. Sales, employees, and leave data. I will first talk about how to transform these datasets so that it can be directly consumed by our charts. First, I will talk about sales data. I have taken the sample sales data from this URL Then I transformed it into a 2D array and wrote it to my spreadsheet. If you are interested in how I wrote this to the spreadsheet, then you can have a look into this script. You could be getting your data in another manner. It's very likely that you will have to do some sort of transformation and data cleanup. Here in my case, I have inserted two computed columns, namely month and quarter. I have combined year with month and quarter so that I can perform group by operation. In another tab, I will prepare my chart data using this clean data. Here, in the chart data, I will pull data by grouping it on the basis of various fields like product category, month, quarter, year, salesperson, country, etc. To write queries, I have taken help from my previous project. You can learn about it in more detail by watching my previous tutorial titled Query Function. I will post its link in the description below. Let me show you how I have prepared this chart data. Click on the Query Function to open the sidebar. This sidebar will contain all the queries from All Queries tab. Any query you write, you can list them here without equals to sign. This will let you reuse your queries across your projects, thus saving your time, and it will also help you with the syntax. You insert these queries by simply clicking on it. It will insert a query function at your current cursor position. You can very easily modify the inserted queries for other data sets. Here's how I have inserted all the queries in the Sales tab. Similarly, for the employees' data, I have inserted the queries to get average salary and maximum salary. For total salary, I have simply used the sum function. 
For leave data, I have inserted queries to get total leave availed per month. This query will return leave availed per employee. Once your chart data is prepared, you can very easily create charts out of this data. Let me show you how simple it is. To insert a quarterly sales chart, select the range and then click on the Insert Chart option. Let's insert a geo chart now. First, I will select this data range containing regional sales. Then click the Insert Chart option. Now choose GeoChart as chart type. To display total sales, salary, or employees, I will use a scorecard. For example, I will select this range and select the chart option to quickly add a scorecard chart. Similarly, you can insert other charts, resize them in different layouts. You can customize its appearance like change the border color and background color to match it with your brand color or your theme. If you want to get some rough idea about themes and appearances of your dashboard, then Google Dashboard Images. You can then try to achieve similar sizing and colors to make great dashboards. Now coming to the dashboard again. Here you can see I am able to switch the charts. Let's see how to do this. Here, I have created a dropdown containing yearly sales, monthly sales, and quarterly sales that matches exactly with the column names in the chart data. You can see it by going to Data, then Data Validation. And here you can see the list. I then use the selection from the dropdown to make this chart data dynamic. First, I match the selection with these column names. The match function gives me the match position. I use that position to offset this range. So that when I change the dropdown, our chart data changes. You can see that in action. And this range is linked to the chart here. Now, coming to this drill down section. Here I have made a set of two drop down. The second one depends on the first one. To make this, go to data, then data validation. Let me show you what I have provided as a drop down range. It's the data from the second row in the Z column in chart data. Let me show that in the Chart Data tab. I am getting this list by first joining all the metrics that I want to show in the drop down list and then splitting it into an array. I then transpose it so that it gets displayed in column direction. The selection from the first dropdown comes here in the cell Z1. Based on the selection from the first dropdown, I get the options corresponding to that selection with the help of match and offset function. Let's say sales by country is selected from the first dropdown. Then we will match it against values in the range A1 to X1 to get the match position. This match position will be fed into this offset function, which gives a new range offsetted from the range A to A. 
The offset value is adjusted by subtracting 2 from it to give the desired range. When the second selection is made, it comes to the cell AA, one which will become the lookup keyword for the XLOOKUP function. The XLOOKUP function takes the lookup keyword, lookup range, and output range. We get both these ranges from the match position as explained previously. Then we finally get our result in the cell AB2. Let me show you once again how it works. I am selecting Sales by Product category in the first dropdown. Here you can see it has updated the options for the next dropdown. Then we select any one of the categories and it outputs the final result. To add query capabilities to your dashboard, you can simply use the query function. Like here, you can see I have used the query function. I am using the WHERE clause to filter records that fall between two dates. I am using the TEXT function to convert the selected date into the string format as part of syntax requirements. Again, you can learn more about it in the tutorial title, Query Function. You will find its link in the description. Similarly, here I am filtering the employee record where the joined date is greater than the selected date. Your dashboard can contain global filters also to illustrate that I am taking help from this dashboard. Here you can see these date filters. This will first filter the sales records and store it in the Filtered Sales tab. The chart data is then prepared out of the filtered record by inserting queries. This way, when you set the date, it will show you charts for the filtered records. Let me quickly show you the whole process of preparing globally filtered dashboard. So you have seen how powerful and flexible the query function is when it comes to making dashboards. You can also use pivot tables to construct charts, but using query functions will make it more powerful and flexible, and it can be reused quickly once you get hold of the syntax. Please feel free to make a copy of the spreadsheet and start experimenting with it. Please like and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.